and welcome to the Jackson Christian Eagles show on the Jackson Christian Facebook. Also brought to you by Worthy Road Studios. It's on the ball game blitz and those synonymous with great broadcasting. And the reason I looked away, our big sponsor right here at Hub City Deli with the crunchy steak wrap is the featured sandwich. But today, I'll let you in on a little secret before we get any further. It's Taco Tuesday, and you can either have the brisket or the pork on Taco Tuesday. Now, without further ado, put your hands together right now, and we're going to introduce the stars of this show, Coach Darby Palmer and Coach Brian Bullard, and Coach is glad to have another week. Coach, uh, we are glad to have another week, and I was thinking about it um, yesterday after practice, we were talking, and there's a lot of schools around the state um, that, that have gone to basketball, and, um, you know, and, and we're very fortunate to uh, still be practicing with another opportunity to go out and play a, a quality opponent Friday. And of course, it's the playoffs, so everybody uh, you come across is going to be a quality opponent, and we're excited. Um, kids are excited. They're focused, and, and we're, we're grateful to be in this, this position. That's the message that we had yesterday with them is telling them how blessed we are to be in the situation that we're in and just to stay in the moment and make the most of this opportunity that we have. That's right. Well, there, there are well, not in our division because Division Two is a little smaller, but there are teams that are sitting at home in our own region that's sitting at home. They're not going anywhere. Now, AAA Division Two is a little lucky. They only have ten teams, so all ten make it. But we're not in that division. We got three regions that are packed with good football teams. We're going to get to see one of them Friday night, and that's a great thing. But, gentlemen, let's go back and talk about an exciting win. A team came in here. Fayette Academy made the playoffs, but they came in here with a chance to knock us out of the second seed. They came in here with an offense, and they run multiple offense. They can do a lot of things. They've got some good young runners and stuff. Now, they're going to graduate some of their linemen, but uh, we just didn't beat a football team. We beat a good football team. Yes, sir, we did. And, and especially speaking defensively first, the, what they do defensively is trying to cause problems and force quarterbacks to throw in tight windows. And I thought Gage did a really good job of making and executing those throws in our game plan when they play cover zero and man free, uh, being able to throw in those windows. Uh, offensively, any time that you face Coach Odom, uh, you know that they're going to be very well coached, but also they're going to line up in about 100 different formations uh, to formation their buck sweep, their G play. Uh, and they were able to do that at the beginning because we weren't reading our keys and we had to settle our guys down. But once our defense settled in, they did an outstanding job. Well, they did because that formation that they use, which I call it double wing, anybody that listens to or watches the broadcast, a um, team called Crockett County a few years ago went all the way to the finals of the state and they didn't even throw the football. Now, Fayette Academy had a fine young quarterback we got to face for another couple of years. But that formation is tough to defend. Oh, it's very hard to defend. And you're counting on your defense, and you're putting that defense in a situation where those linebackers have to read their keys and they have to fit properly for four quarters. Early on, we didn't do that. Uh, but we were able to adjust and make adjustments with our sophomore linebackers, and they, they played a heck of a game. Well, wouldn't you all say that now the rest of this season, I mean, it's important all during the regular season, adjustments become even more paramount now. And kids, the team that makes them the best and the fastest usually wins. Absolutely. In, in a high school football game, normally both sides offensively, you run about 60, 70 plays. So you have 60, 70 snaps that you got to make sure that your defense is alignment and assignment football, and they don't have any busts. And so this time of the year, it's huge. Coach, you look like a man that got some stats over there that will blow people out. And do we take autographs tonight, or do we wait one more week before Coach going to get the autograph booth going? Uh, well, we'll wait another week. Okay. We'll, we'll see what happens. But, um, you know, you, it's his rinse repeat, Coach. Ken Boyd, uh, 15 rushes, 139 yards, and a touchdown. 14th career, 100-yard rushing game. Uh, gives him almost 1,400 yards and 18 total touchdowns on the season. What can we say, uh, and we'll let Coach Phillips talk about him as well, about Jack Collins. Um, and, and Coach McLean does a great job with this page for us. And every time that I looked at it today and then Coach Palmer read it for the first time, he said, Jack has a pick in four straight games. And we started thinking about it, and he does. And he's gotten better and better um, as, as the, these last four games have played out. Jay Mosley, <clears throat> nine rushes for 114 yards and a touchdown. Three catches, 82 yards for two touchdowns, and that gives him – 1,000 career yards in both rushing and receiving. And then 
Daniel, and we talked about Daniel on the show. Uh, that yep. was one of the guys we talked about uh, last week going into this game with two catches for 40 yards and two touchdowns, and we'll talk a little bit more about him uh, as we close tonight. Uh, we've got some, some news for that, but – Coach, it's just another good um, workman-like performance from our offensive line. Um, Gage made good throws. Our, our guys executed. And, um, you know, we – Coach Palmer hit on the, the first drive after we had scored. Uh, Fayette came back and just punched us right in the mouth. And, and as a defensive line coach, the, it, it makes you a little bit upset because we'd worked all week and had really good practices and guys were doing what they were supposed to be doing. It just takes settling in and playing. And that first drive is – a uh, lot of emotions, a lot of anxiety, a lot of adrenaline pumping. And after that, our guys just settled in, and I think we give up seven more points in that game. But um, really proud of those guys um, up front. And like he said, our linebackers and those guys, we'll, we'll talk to one tonight, um, just a sophomore that's, that's getting better and better. And, you know, you got to live with some of that well, We're going to have two of those unlicensed chiropractors tonight. <laughs> that's right. That's right. i gotta got to bring a name up. Go ahead. Easton Jones. Mm-hmm. I saw him at – one high safety, what I call it, the other night. Pretty good job. Absolutely. And, and Easton had battled injuries pretty much this whole year and just got healthy right after fall break, so the FACS game. And you probably saw him out there a yep. little bit, and he's slowly been getting back, uh, dealing with a hamstring, and those can be hard to overcome. But, yeah, he, he's worked. He's gone to physical therapy. He's got his body right, and we're we're excited to have Easton back in the mix. No, I thought he, he gets better every ball game, and uh, we like that young man. We've seen him uh, – Molly hawks some people on some tackles that he makes, and that's important. And especially, you play, and you play one high, you got to have that that guy at free safety that can come downhill and fill both alleys. Oh yes, because and- he may be the only one that's got a chance if they block it exactly right. He's the man that's got to make the play. And that's but, right. but we whip some people. They were trying to create their alleys and lanes, whatever you want to call them, open spot. And we were we were literally whipping folks and getting to the point of attack. Much better. only time we got in trouble was early. We didn't get to the point of attack a couple of times. And they had two fine running backs, three and twenty-four could tote the pumpkin. Absolutely, and it's all about setting the edge. You know, a lot of those formations that we saw last week with Fade Academy, they're trying to outflank you, get to the edge. A lot of eye candy with motions, and our guys really settled in. We were able to solidify the edge and come up and make a play. Zach Sisko continues to find the end zone. I call them home runs. Literally, it's out of the park when he kicks one like it. Had no wind to help him at all uh, last week. The wind was calm, and so he's doing a good job. Now, we did have a snap that uh, we didn't get handled, but you know what? Even though we didn't score on it, it shows our kids were ready to pick it up, try to throw the pass, get the score. That's right, and we talked about the championship mentality. You're your champion long before that you are one. And being able to have that culture where you don't flinch, not everything's going to go your way. But own your 111, stay the course, stack plays, and, and we didn't flinch. And we could have. We could have after, after their first drive. But our defense and our team really rallied around one another, and we were able to get the job done. A couple of good blocks, and I hate to single any one lineman out, but, again, I thought – we had a great first drive, and people we scored. So, understand my comment. Thought our offensive line got better as the game wore on. Now, got to remember in the second half, coaches played a lot of people, a lot of people, because I called a lot of fresh names and fresh jerseys. But the offensive line, and that's why if we can score and we're going to get better each time we handle the football, we're going to be all right. Absolutely, and, and it's a testament to our O-line and D-line, but we want to – really own the line of scrimmage, especially offensively. And when they play man free and also when they bring that safety in the box and play cover zero, there's going to be more guys than we can block. And they did a great job sorting it out, us getting to the edge early on. But also, we keep coming back to how our defense responded. I believe that they they held Fade Academy to 11 yards in the second quarter. And the second quarter is when we really took over the game and we were able to score a lot of points. Full same head. we got about a minute left, gentlemen, as you all know. Final comments in this segment, and then we're gonna we'll talk more about Columbia Academy coming up a little later. Coach, uh, just talk for the the last little bit about uh, Friday and, and kind of the atmosphere we would love to have and, and that sort of thing. Absolutely, our fan base uh, does a great job supporting us home or away, and and we would love for everybody to come out uh, seven o'clock and and be there to be kind of our twelfth man uh, as we go into and we can host this home first round playoff game. Absolutely. 
you come out to the home of the Beckham. That's one of the sandwiches <laughs> here. And uh, speaking of him, he just he just joined. He's watching this right he now. He is so. watching this right now, and uh, hopefully Stephen Hamilton from out in Arizona, come get your sandwiches. We've got a good crowd here. You can be part of it. Next week, Coach Palmer is going to sign autographs, and, <laughs> and we're uh, Coach Coach Butler. We're not going to embarrass him. We'll tell you why he has he has reached a milestone, and no, he's already turned 21 and got his degree. <laughs> there are other milestones in life, and he's fixing to move on to to the next one, just like some of the most outstanding young men. But Gary Lockhart is our official timer, producer, director. The executive director is here. That's how important this show is now. Everybody's here. We appreciate you listening. Get yourself down here some night. Let's take a time out here on the Jackson Christian Eagle Show. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And it gets better if you happen to be one of those people with an extra hand. I don't. You, I know you don't, but go get five of your friends, get your kids. It gets even better. Rob Phillips is here. Coach Bullard's here. But Rob is our special guest in this segment. The man that's laying the defense down, or if this was wrestling, he would be layeth the smack down. <laughs> and, um, matter of fact, he's starting to look a little bit like the rock. But anyway, well, I guess it's because of the hairdo. That may be what he is because he's got, he's got more facial hair than the rock does. We also got two of his fine linebackers here tonight, and they are unlicensed chiropractors. They'll be ready to rearrange your bones anytime you want them to. Coach Buller, I'm going to turn it over to you to start because I'm excited because Coach is the man with the plan. Coach, we're going to – thanks for being here with us tonight. We're going to talk about Fayette first um, and then move into Columbia on, on Friday. But we knew coming into the game – uh, Fayette was going to put a, run a lot of formations, try to put a lot of stress on our defense, um, give us different looks and, and things like that, run their quarterback. And, and they did all those things. Um, first drive, uh, we, we go down and score. They get the ball, and they take it and kind of punch us in the mouth a little bit. What did you see uh, from that drive from our defense versus how we progressed throughout the game? Uh, I can't remember the specifics, but I remember how – you know, D-line-wise, we made an adjustment on the sideline. There was kind of something we were expecting them to do, and then they did they did it a little bit differently. And so we made an adjustment and said, uh, let's see where this kind of leads us. And it, it really helped us out, you know, later in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, until we got those uh, those young guys in. Um, and, that, and I think maybe this might have been the best our D-line has played all year. Yeah, I would agree. What, what if I told you, if you hadn't read that yet, what if I told you Jack Collins has recorded an interception in four straight games? What, what, is that, what does that do for uh, his confidence, and, and does that surprise you? I, uh, I mean, I think I, I knew that, but I hadn't, had not paid attention to it. Has it really been four yeah. straight games yep. that he's gotten an interception? Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Sticky fingers. Yeah. And this one, uh, Friday night, I remember even on the sideline, you made a comment about, did you see how it just how he just stuck it with his hands? I mean, it was great. Well, remember over at FACS, he's the guy that we didn't handle. One of the few times we mishap when we get the football early, and he took it right back from him in the mm-hmm. end zone. And and you, you mentioned that, and, and we talked about it, and Jack was a guy that, um, you know, we had a game where he struggled, and, and he challenged himself, and we challenged him to – um, to get better, and, and I think he's answered that call tremendously. He's done a great job for us. Yeah, that shows – to me, that also shows – like, this is Jack's first season starting. And so, you know, I guess – I think Jack has four total on the year, so yep. those are those yep. four. Mm-hmm. That right there is the hard work paying off in the first half of the season where maybe he did struggle a little bit, and now look at that, four straight games making a making a key play for us. So, looking ahead um, with the challenge for Friday, if we go back a few weeks, um, we played at Columbia Academy. It was lightning rain. It, it was, it was uh, some not great circumstances. And, and they kind of came out 
Um, a lot of momentum and, and really firing out and hitting us and running the ball on us. And um, talk about uh, how our defense looks different from that game maybe and, and how it's evolved and, and gotten a little bit better. So, and I think a lot of people would say that we do a lot of the same things. But, um, you know, Sunday – I think we sat down and we said there are seven guys in the, in either a new role or moved roles um, on our on our defense right now, and you know there was actually something that that night that kind of clicked with our up front. You know we had struggled in a couple areas up front against North Point and St. George, and then that night during that first lightning delay, I think. That was when we sat down as a group and we kind of made a couple of changes and we swapped some guys here and there and and it's worked for us ever since then. So uh, yeah, I mean they're they're a really good team yep. too and yeah they were fired up that night. I think we talked about it being uh, Coach Anderson's first game there at his alma mater and and you know the same thing's going to happen here. It's their first playoff game with him as a coach. I mean they they've got some very talented people, great running back. So they're, yeah, Monte they're be ready Baldwin, to play. Yep. he was 13 for 67 going into half halftime, but he got most of that yardage before the the <laughs> first lightning break. He had gotten a lot of that, and uh, we did a better job later in the contest on on that as far as the half. And I know they uh, they feel like they could have won. I know we could have won if we'd played the second half. But it was the right decision. It was dangerous conditions. So. Coach Phillips, put on your defensive coordinator hat. There, these folks are coming to watch uh, this game Friday. And, and what are three, what are three things that we have to do defensively to put ourselves in a good position to win the ball game? So we've we've talked all year about how we've got two young middle linebackers, and you know we ask them to do a lot, but also each week we're reading certain keys, and sometimes that changes from one thing to the other, but. Those two have to do a good job reading their keys. Um, we've got to do a really good job up front, setting the edge uh, with our with our dog and our and our end on the backside. And uh, I, I would say the last one is something we say every week, and that's limiting big plays. You know, I, I we've talked a lot about this in the coach's office. Um, drive, an, an offense driving down the field doesn't I know that I know that bothers some people that doesn't really bother me as much because if you notice we get the teams get to about the 35 40 and we usually shut them down those passing windows have tightened up a little bit make a team sustain those drives drive down the field on you instead of giving them big chunk plays and momentum plays so I would say those three things are are three of the biggest factors Friday night defensively yeah favorite phrase for the audience has been but don't break that's right and it does cut down avenues the sidelines can be an asset to us too and teams are going to make mistakes if you got to make an 80-yard drive and Zach Cisco puts them in some 80-yard drive situation then they got time to leave the pumpkin laying on the floor or either somebody like Jack Collins or Mason Vaughn or one of those other fine young we've had other interceptions this year but Jack doing an extremely good job right now hey that's what we want make them work for it that's right what about uh one one thing that I was thinking as you were talking about talking about their running back we got to tackle yes um, and and that's one thing that you and I talked about um, being a huge key this week is tackling him in space they get him they do a good job getting that that guy in space and he will cut back and um, how do you how do you feel like our tackling has progressed um, throughout the year because in my eyes I think it's gotten better um, each game. Yeah, I think we are we are much better. You know, that's something we focused on this week in practice. And uh, one thing that I, that I definitely think we've gotten better at is pursuing the football as a unit because at the beginning of the year there were some times where, oh, man, it's kind of like you look out there and he's going to make a play. I don't have to run as hard to the football. And so I think we've done a much better job of doing that. i got to interject this. Playing the great running backs, and I'm going to give the kids at TCA Tompkins credit. He's – not only is he very good now, he's going to get better. Pennington is very good over at FACS. And we faced two last week, three and 24. And apologies to them for their names escaping me. Ta having to tackle those really good running backs, has that helped us as we've had to tackle them each week? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we have faced running backs all year long. And then if it wasn't the running back, the quarterbacks were running. So uh, I definitely think that that, is, that that has helped. I mean, this – this guy, uh, 
this guy's really good. Yeah, and their quarterback the now, I'm not sure which one, because Nieves probably won't play from what I'm hearing. Or he's gonna be <laughs> We're going to face either Craw uh, Crossan or Brownlee, and I don't have my numbers with me to know which one. They bring a little different thing because I think they're not bad runners. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of zone read stuff and, and quarterback counters and things like that. So that they'll run with – with Ball, but they'll also run with uh, or Baldwin, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Monte then they, Baldwin. But then they uh, they also keep it and run with the quarterback a lot. Yeah, and it's uh, so it's a good team. We uh, they are very good. They wouldn't be in the playoffs. Uh, it's not like Triple uh, A. Triple A, everybody gets to make the playoff. I know Joey Magnifico is a friend of mine, the coach St. Benedict. They were zero and ten last year. It was Joey's first. They made the playoffs in Triple A. That doesn't happen in Double A. You have to win to get in there. So, Coach Phillips, we have about a minute and a half left. Um, I asked Coach Palmer this before we signed off with him. Uh, talk talk a little bit about uh, Friday night, playing a home playoff game, maybe an experience you had or, or something from your dad's coaching days, something like that, and just kind of wrap up with uh, some words for our, our viewers and our fans. You know, I, I, I really hope that we have – you know, it can be tough sometimes as a – I realize as a parent – to bring maybe your family to a playoff game where you got to pay a little bit higher price ticket, but uh, there is nothing like like playoff football, and uh, I really hope that everybody will come out. We need we need energy, we need it loud. Um, and uh, when I when I played high school football, you know we did play at home a lot, um, and and there's just some of those memories that start to come back to you when you know it's a little cooler and you're playing and you know your season's on the line and so um it's exciting it's i, I told him today um you get remembered by how you play in november that's so right that's what we're looking for. we're looking forward to friday very quick before we take the break two linebackers i know you're very proud of them. anything you want to say before they come on uh well one you know we missed him early on and he didn't get to play against columbia academy the first time yeah. and i'm excited to have him back and uh the other one Wyatt, I mean, what, what what more can I say about him? The leadership that he shows, the way that he handles kind of making all the calls defensively. Um, he he is – both of them are blessings, but he is a blessing as far as kind of being the captain of that defense out and there. And he scored on offense last week, too. We want, to, we want to make sure we give him all the credit. If we don't mention that, he's going to shut the show down. I, I know yeah. that. He's, he was already asking me about it. For yeah, talk very about good. It. Coach, always a pleasure, and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to miss you in softball, but I'm going to try to talk you into going ahead. This young man is a talented teacher, coach, but he's also got a wonderful disposition. And love having him here with Coach Bullard and Coach Darby and I and the players. But we're going to have to take a time out because we've all got to sneak over to the food and get a little bit of that food here at Hub City Deli. And remember, and I'm going to give the uh, Beckham two plugs tonight, and I, I, I bet – I bet Blake's got one of those at home. But anyway, the Jackson Christian Eagle Show from here at Hub City Deli. We'll be back after this timeout. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. We are back with the Jackson Christian Eagle Show from right here at Hub City Deli. Let me tell you why. Gary ran a quick break on you. He really wanted to get back to his food and stuff. <laughs> And he knew I was trying to enjoy my chest pile. I'll tell you, it is great. We got desserts. We got everything, including the best director around. Coach Buller and I are here. But now, here's a fine young man that I love calling his name out. He also wears a pretty good number, number five. I kind of like that number. Joe DiMaggio wore it. Johnny Bench wore it. Coach Joe wore it at one time. But he's a much better player than I am. Coach, again, I'm going to let you hear handle the introduction of one of our two unlicensed chiropractors. Yes, sir, Coach. I appreciate it. We have sophomore linebacker Kyle White here with us tonight. Um, looking at his his line from Fade Academy, five total tackles um, on the season, 32 total tackles, three tackles for loss and a sack. And 
white, uh, Kai. It's going to be hard to get Kai and White together. So Yeah, well, I thought they were everywhere on the field. Now, the other night's when we should have taken a picture. Those two guys were better than a, a person that had hot coals under their feet. They were all over the place pursuing the ball, scraping into the holes. And Kai, i got to ask Kai first. Go ahead. I apologize. How do you do it? You do, it, Are the reads just coming fast and you give it all you got and you're going to scrape up in the hole and you're going to set corners and blast people to kingdom come when you hit them? Well, it's all what the coaches tell us. They just read our guards and do our job and it takes us to the ball every time. That, that is great. And he gets there. That's what I love about it. And uh, now you hadn't thought about chiropractic <laughs> as a life definite because he can rearrange your bones when he hits you. That's right. That's right. Kai, um, you battled some an injury early um, and, you know, missed a couple of games. And we had talked about um, how you didn't play in the Columbia game. But let's go to the <clears> – <throat> excuse me. Let's start with the Fayette game. Um, you know, we talked about how they, they kind of took it to us on that first drive, um, drove down the field and scored on us, made it 7-7. Seven to seven. Um, What did the defense uh, come over and talk about and, and what adjustments uh, did you make as, as a linebacker and along with being a part of our defense? Um, I got caught with my eyes in the backfield. And as you can see, most of the runs were up the middle. And they were moving me out of the box with trips. And I should have been looking at my guard, but instead I was looking at the receiver. And they just ran it up the middle and took it in for a touchdown. So you mentioned something, and we like to try to break things down. You were looking in the backfield. And most people, if you're – if you're thinking about it, yeah, you need to be looking in the backfield if you're on defense. But but your job as an inside linebacker, and you're talking about reading your keys, and w- and one of your main keys is to is to read your guard and and talk about that how that will take you to the football uh, most of the time. Um, your guard is going to where you are. They pull, like they can run stretch counter. Usually the guard is that first blocker to get around. He just takes you where the ball is, and running back's running right off his butt every time. Do you like it when, and i got to ask this, when they double down on the nose, that tells you that you're fixing to get a chance to smack somebody, aren't you? Yes, sir. So, is that just come from early that first drive? Is that just adrenaline, and you want to make a play so bad that that you kind of get uh, lost in the game? Yes, sir. And, and Coach, we talked about it with with Coach Phillips, defensive coordinator, how – uh, the adjustments that these guys made, and you know they're sophomores, um, and and both guys are are new to, not new to the position, but new to getting those kind of reps. And um, you know Fayette does a good job with their formations and things like that. And um, so we got we got Columbia Academy um, coming in first round of the playoffs. Um, you know we struggled a little bit at their place, and the game got uh, called. What what challenges are are you looking forward to with with them coming to? Uh, play us Friday night? Um, they're a physical team. I think we need to match their physicality and just do our job, read our keys. We've been doing it in practice, and it's been paying off every play. Would you say that it's it's Tuesday night, um, you know, Wednesday practice tomorrow. Would you say that the team has pretty good focus and, and pretty good intensity the last two days of practice? Yes, sir. It's been high energy. And everyone's been straight to the point every time it gets serious. Absolutely. Coach, we, we hadn't had Colin yet, so why don't yep. you ask him some of our okay. uh, some personal questions. I there. am. I'm only going to ask him one more football question. Okay. Are you are you ready to lock up a little more on ball when he's pretty – he's kind of like tackling uh, Tompkins or Pennington from FACS and some of those kids. So locking up on him and not taking his fakes is a key to getting him in. Is there? Okay. Now – we need to get – first thing, let's always start with the Bible first because that's important. We're a Christian school. We teach young men and young ladies to be better people, and I know that – I know you've got one because I've, I've talked to you before just or listened. To, what's your favorite Bible verse? Um, probably Philippians 4.13. It's just always stuck with me. And it, it will. And it, he lives that too, folks. He's telling you the truth. What about school now? Favorite subject, and you can have more than one favorite teacher. That's something I've learned. A couple of the young men coaches told me, well, I got more than one favorite teacher, but only one subject. You can have as many subjects and as many teachers as you want to mention. Um, favorite subject would have to be math. It just it just comes easy to me. And um, my favorite teacher would probably have to be 
Miss Stephanie Christensen. Or, um, yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, you can have more than one now. I, the reason I said yes because I've heard some good things. Uh, somebody off to the side warned me. What about school? What's what's a favorite activity at school besides the classroom and football? Um, probably art. It's a good way to just get out of school and just clear. Yeah, art is a great everything. thing. You a painter? Of uh, drawing? What's your specialty in art? Whatever Miss CC wants us to do. <laughs> I like that, man. No wonder he's a great linebacker. That's right. Now, what's the favorite food at school and also away from school? Um, at school, the ham and cheese sliders. And um, away from school, probably chicken alfredo. Wow, this young man's got good mm -hmm. taste. I know who to get to buy my lunch. Now, what about the other sports do you play anything besides football i know you hit the weight program because i can already see some results there um baseball baseball so i'm gonna get to see you in baseball a whole lot this year now your counterpart white i get to see him a whole lot because he's having to catch a lot of the games what do you play in baseball what position um well i've I haven't really been enjoying baseball as much, so I'm just I, I love pitching. So I just became oh. a PO last year. Well, Coach Buller will agree. Now we got our pitching got better. We can always never have enough pitching, do we, Coach? <laughs> That's right. That's exactly and, right, uh, Coach. All on the pitching. Now, what about favorite memory in any sport? And it can definitely be football. You've been at Jackson Christian for a while. What one play or one game sticks out in your mind? Um, off of the games that I've played, I don't really have a lot of memories, but I'm just going to say one from this year. Um, playing Harding Academy was, uh, I was there last year, and um, seeing how big of a difference it is of being here and there, and how at the time I didn't know how smart it was to come here. But after that game and the success we had and the struggle that I could see in their team, it just made me a lot happier that I made the decision to come here. Uh, you can tell, folks, and I hope you're watching the camera and the pictures on him because uh, you could see a light come on on his face and some things like that. The um, favorite sports move, i got to get that. And then, Coach, I've got to check my time. But if you've got any more, but what's a favorite sports move? There's got to be one that may have influenced you a little bit. Um, remember the Titans. Remember the Titans. That's a good one. And everybody learned to play together, and they kind of finally came together as a family like we have at Jackson Christian School. Yes, sir. And um, I know when Bertier got hurt in the wreck in the movie, the team rallied around that because they could have folded up. And they had a good year. I'll give you a little hint. They did wind up the number two team in the nation that year and should have been number one. They were actually better than the number one te team. Coach, you got any more? I've, I've got one, but I'm, I'm going to save my question for his time to talk here in a minute when it's his turn. Coach, you go ahead. Well, let's no, let's go ahead and uh, <clears throat> you go ahead and if you got it, because I'm, I'm going to yield my question to his time because this is a young man that is knowledgeable, he's smart, and I like him as an unlicensed chiropractor wrecking the offense. So, Kyle, we talked a little bit about this, but uh, talk to – uh, the viewers, and, and what is one thing that Jackson Christian defense has to do uh, Friday night to, to be successful? Um, play as a team. There's no – when someone makes a mistake, there's no reason to point fingers. Just got to play together as one. Absolutely. Now, Guy, it's your turn to say anything you want to the fans. You can even say something to your former classmates at Harding Academy. But the football fans are sitting on your every word right now. Um, I'd like to say it's Blackout Friday, and they got to come and bring the energy because it's going to be a big game. Absolutely. Give us a go, Eagles, before you go, though. Go, Eagles. There you go. <laughs> there he is, one of the fine young linebackers, and guess what? He's going to get better and better and better. We are here at Hub City Dealing. It is the Jackson Christian Eagle Show, Coach Bullard's here. I'm here. Coach Palmer's been here. Coach Phillips. We've got another guest. We'll come back after this timeout. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. 
A big favorite is Pete's Brisket Hoagie with Brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. show just keeps getting better. The food keeps getting better here at Hub City Deli. I got my cohort, Brian Bullard, and Coach, we'd be out ready for basketball. But we're going to extend this season for a while longer, and we'd like to take it all the way into December, and we can do it. we got some fine young men. And I promised you two unlicensed chiropractors tonight. Well, you've got the second one, and he not only does that as a side job, Happens to catch a little bit in baseball, and he's become an offensive threat. I'm going to turn it over to Coach Brian Bullard now. Coach, thank you. Our second uh, linebacker here tonight, senior uh, Wyatt Jones. And I, I left something off, um, and I can't believe it. I put his tackles on here, but we didn't even talk about his one carry and, and one touchdown uh, Friday night. And, and you could see the excitement from all of uh, his, his teammates and coaches, and we were pumped about that, Wyatt. Talk about that, um, how that kind of evolved throughout the week, and then uh, it happened and came to fruition on Friday night. Yeah, uh, we put it in, I think, the week of TCA. Uh, probably just Coach Reichard being the guy he is. We're just kind of messing around during an inside run, and he's like, let's try this. And I'm not really thinking that much about it, but we get we get around the week of Fayette, and I know it's senior night, and you know how you know how the guys are. They want to get all the seniors as many touches as they can. So, we get down, it's third and goal, and I'm not expecting anything. We get in our heavy stuff, and I go in just thinking I'm going to help Cam punch another touchdown in, and he calls it, and I'm thinking, all right, let's do it. And I get the ball, turn around the corner, and it's wide open. Our, our offensive line did a great job. They did. Did anybody even touch you with the edge of their finger? No. I think you didn't even dirty up your uniform that one. He streaked in there like a blue streak. It looked, this, it looked like there wasn't even a defense out there. We did good on that one. He did and the whole team. Absolutely. And, and Wyatt didn't know this. We were talking about it before while they were eating. Um, and I signal in the plays and Coach Herb signal in the plays. And we were, you know, getting ready and listening. And, and Co he hears the – Coach Palmer hears the signal. And he said, are we sure? And, and Coach Riker said, absolutely. And uh, we were all excited. And, and this is just a guy that uh, you ask him to do anything and he's going to give it his best. He may not always get it done, but he's going to give it everything he has. Um, and, and you knew that if there was a hole, he was going to get in there and, and score, and that was a big moment for him. Well, absolutely. Uh, we've created night. a new threat that you've got to watch. Now we've given Columbia Academy something extra they got to work on. Not only does the play work, but the man running it works very hard. Absolutely. So let's move on to uh, defensive side of the ball. Um, eight total tackles, um, bringing your season total uh, to 55 and, and two and a half tackles for loss. Um, why talk about um, – kind of your success as a linebacker, but also um, our team's success the last four games going down the stretch leading into the playoffs? Well, everything uh, defensively starts up front with our, our front four. And, I mean, Caleb, Chill, Sed, Joey, Kyle, everybody that rotates in, they do a great job. I mean, they get in there and they do all the dirty work and free us up. A lot of teams, uh, they'll pull guards and they'll do a lot of just funky stuff, and our defensive line gets in there and gets the job done, frees up guys like me, Kai, and Eli Craig, and we get to have all the fun. So the first drive, um, it was no secret. they We scored, and then they, they turned around and, and kind of punched us in the mouth a little bit. What what did we uh, – and Kai had his opinion, and uh, he talked a little bit about it. What was your thoughts on that first drive versus the rest of the game and how we got better after that? Uh, I think knowing that that game was still critical to our seating in the playoffs – played in a little bit and you know we're a young defense and those guys probably got a little bit amped up but I talked to them I just I told them they just got to do their job trust everybody else and I mean it worked out towards the end. Gave up 14 points to a, a good um, Fade Academy offense and a team that does a lot of different things and um, very proud of, of our defense and our and you mentioned that our defensive line uh, gotten a lot better. Uh, let's talk about um, our defensive unit from the first time we played Columbia coming into this game on Friday night? Uh, I mean, I'd like to say it's a completely different unit. Going into Columbia, we're still we're still very young. We've got – I think we only have three starting seniors on the defense and maybe only one or two that rotate in. So, going into it, we got a lot of guys that haven't played the – haven't seen a lot of field time. And we've played two hard games against North Point and uh, St. George's at this point. So, we get in there and 
I mean, we're rolling, and I think they, I think we may get a little, uh, may get a little too content with who we are and what we've done in the past, and we get out there and we're just kind of doing our thing. But I mean, I felt like the defense played well, and we're ready for another great week. You've watched film, and you're a guy that watches plenty of film. What are some, what are some challenges that their offense um, poses for our defense Friday night? Uh, they're, I mean, they're a scrappy team. They're going to punch you in the mouth. They're going to play hard up front. They like to run. They like to run outside, like to run a lot of stretch and stuff. Their quarterback is also a threat to run, so we'll have to pay attention to that. And I'm pretty sure he's a former wide receiver, so they like to get him out of the pocket and let him use his legs. That can put some stress on the defense. Yeah, yeah that tells me something, you know, because I wasn't sure. Crossing is not a wide out, but Brownlee is. And I've been trying to determine my friends in Columbia won't tell me which one is going to start. It'll be one of the – I think Nieves has an injury is the reason. The kid that started against his first time and did a good job. But uh, you like hitting people, don't you? Yes, sir. Coach, go ahead with your, your line of questioning. Let's talk a little bit about your teammates. Um, and, and we've touched on this. Um, Jack Collins uh, getting better, has a pick six in that game, his fourth straight game with an interception. What, what would you uh, – did you talk with him? Have, have you tried to kind of talk to him, uh, you being a senior and his, being a guy that, that's had a little bit of struggle, um, but it has really come on as of late, and those, our corners being their first-year starter? Uh, absolutely. I mean, Jack, he's – I've played a lot, of, a lot of baseball and a lot of football with Jack at my time at JCS, and Jack's always been a guy that's hard on himself, which I think is a great quality to have in a football player and a baseball player, but we, I've had a lot of talks with Jack about his composure and the way that he responds to when things don't go right, and I think after the uh, USJ game, Jack felt like he may not had his best game, and after that, I'm not sure that anybody can complete a pass on him. He's great, and I mean, to harp on Trent Carrier as well, he's been awesome. I mean, this is his first year playing corner. He's always been a linebacker type guy safety maybe and he comes out here and he works his butt off all the time and just makes sure that he's doing his job and helping out the defense what about those guys in the middle two sophomores um, you guys have a lot of fun in practice and, and have a good chemistry um, you trust those guys to, to do their job yes sir absolutely I know that anytime that the ball is coming to my side and I've got to I've got to set the edge and just funnel everything back into them I trust them to scrape over the top and make plays they do a great job. They love to have fun, which I think is a great quality of our defense and our team as a whole. We have a lot of fun, but game time, they're ready to make plays and they're ready to come out and hit people in the mouth. Absolutely, Coach. Yeah, I've got to go back to your senior senior night last Friday night. Give us some quick thoughts about that. You're a team captain, and, and, and a lot of people don't understand because they've never had their last home game come up like that. Uh, I mean, it's mixed emotions, but for the most part, knowing that we're still going to be in the playoffs regardless of what happens and just being able to keep going out there with the guys you love and the, the guys that you spend so much time with and go through so much pain and stuff with, it was just a great feeling. And then knowing that I got all my brothers with me and that they're going to ride with me no matter what and fight through anything that happens. It was, I mean, it was great. It was, I had a lot of motivation going into that game. Absolutely. Now let's hit some up close and personal questions. First of all, the Bible verse, and he's given it to us before, mm -hmm. but – you need to hear it again because this young man is dedicated and a good Christian himself. Uh, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 9.24. It just talks about the race and just running that race and just being having God by your side. And I just think that's a great – just a great verse because, I mean, as we know, life's a race. You'll have your ups and downs, but you got to stick through it with him. Other than sports and classroom, what's, what's some favorite activities like chapel, something like that, that you like at Jackson Christian? Uh, I mean, I like, to, I like to stay in the gym. I like to – keep fit and be healthy, lift weights, and I like to eat. <laughs> okay, favorite teacher and subject. You can have more than one favorite teacher. I've learned from the other players that don't limit it to one. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a tough question. I've had some great teachers in the past, like Miss Audrey Campbell and Miss Stephanie Gatlin, but this year I've really enjoyed Coach Teichman and his stats class. But at the same time, I also like having the uh, – I also like having the multimedia class with Coach McLean. It gives you an opportunity to just work on stuff and continue to support our social media pages. And Coach McLean's an awesome dude. He is. He is at that. The other sport is, do you do anything besides baseball now? And he is a great catcher. Go watch our tapes from last year. This guy throws his body. He will not have a pass ball. It won't be his fault if it gets by because it hits a pebble in the batter's box or something outside like that. Anything else you do like that? 
No, sir. Just football and baseball. Favorite memory as far as sports at Jackson Christian? Uh, I mean, beating USJ that sophomore year, that was, that was a great time. Isn't that, great that, that is. Hey, the call is still on YouTube, <laughs> Worthy Road Studios, too, if you want to go back listening to it. And, of course, uh, food. We need a favorite school food and a favorite out-of-school food. Uh, school, definitely Miss Angie's Ham and Cheese Slider. She, she makes great food. And, I mean, those things are awesome. Outside, all you need, anything wings. I mean, tear it up. Yes, he will. Your turn, and, and this you can see why he's a leader. He has led in this interview. Coach Buller and I are secondary. This that's young right. man has taken charge. Like, that's the reason we're proud of him. Your turn to say anything to the Jackson Christian fans. Uh, just keep coming out. Keep supporting. We uh, we had a great regular season, and it was awesome to see people coming out to all our home games and even some of the farther away games. But keep coming out. We're not done. Our story is going to continue, and we're going to keep playing this, this November. Go Eagles. Yeah, let's play into December. Go Eagles. I agree with him. And we're going to be back after a timeout from Hub City Deli. But you don't want to miss the wrap-up of this show. The Jackson Christian Eagles show will be back after this. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. Back to the Jackson Christian Eagle Show, the most electrifying show of this type in entertainment anywhere, not just sports entertainment. Brian Bullard, Coach Joe Holloway, Gary Lockhart commanding the ship tonight. He is our Star Trek commander. And, Coach, we've got to wrap it up. But we have got a ton of stuff, everything from future opponent. Uh, probably need to say one or two more words about Fayette Academy, our record and with them, and I think we took control of it. And since Darby's not here, we're going, we need to mention him just for us for a second, and then we got to discuss Columbia Academy. Yes, sir. Uh, the 55 to 14 win uh, moved us to 10 and nine in the series all time. Um, and and I wouldn't talk about this with him here because he's he's a humble guy, but uh, picks up career win number 38, and that is tied with Coach Cohue. Um, and if we're fortunate enough to pull out a victory Friday, he will be uh, the all-time leader in wins at Jackson Christian. Um, yes, he and, will. And a short amount of time. And, and that's a testament to to him and, and how hard he – you won't find a, a more tireless worker that is always thinking about Jackson Christian football, not just the wins and losses, but uh, these kids and their lives and, and their spiritual lives and – their personal lives and all the things that they deal with. And, and Coach Palmer, uh, he's, he'd probably be mad at me for talking about him like that, but he's a really good friend of mine, and um, I've been blessed to be with him through these games. And, you know, it, it picked up the program when, when we needed uh, to right the ship. Yep. And, and the ship's got to have a captain. And if you don't, uh, you're kind of just aimlessly going. And, and he is a uh, – Tremendous competitor, but also a tremendous uh, example for these guys. And we're, we're proud of him, and we're going to talk about it, and hopefully we'll get to celebrate that uh, on the 14-yard on the line um, Friday night after the game. Uh, hopefully so. I'm going to get myself in trouble, too, by agreeing with you. He and his family, and he's got two families or one big one, his wife and he have good kids, and they're a fine Christian family, but he is leading – a fine Christian family called football players. And every one of our coaches, our players are dedicated, and I call them young people because I'm older than any of them. Matter of fact, I'm old enough to be Coach Bull and Coach Darby's <laughs> dad and stuff and would be proud if I were, and I know their parents are. Jackson Christian, a great place to not only get an education, to play sports, to be well coached, but to learn how to be a better Christian. And Coach, that in a big win – a good team. We take uh, we're ten and nine, as you told folks. Any final comment we need to wrap up on Fayette Academy? No, uh, we respect those guys and good hard fought game, uh, physical game. Guys shook hands at the end, and you know they hopefully they're trying to go on a playoff run, and um, we're we're trying to do the same, and we wish the best to those guys as the postseason starts. Absolutely, the opponent we've played a half against them. It didn't count. It, it was a no contest game. 
we got better towards the end of it. I'm going to give you some opening statements, and then let's talk about some facets. And also some of the administrative facets about ticket prices, where to get them, et cetera, like that. But let's, let's start with the game first. Yeah, Columbia Academy, um, two and one all time against uh, those guys. We've won the last two. And as you mentioned, that game a few weeks ago uh, was a no contest. And it's it just kind of a weird vibe. You know, we came out kind of flat, and they were excited. And um, who knows what would have happened in the second half. We felt good about the adjustments that we made, and I'm sure they did. I'm sure they're going to be excited and fired up to come over here and play. And as we talked about earlier, though, it's the playoffs. And it, it's a winner go home mentality. And uh, these, these folks that are left, there's a reason they're in. And – they play in a good region over there. They, they play quality opponents week in and week out, and they, they haven't been shy about going to play Boyd Buchanan, and they're, they got, there's some really good teams on their schedule. Uh, but we, had, we have a lot of confidence. We trust uh, that if we do what we're supposed to do and, and our offensive line gets after folks and uh, we can get the run game going and make good reads through the air and um, our defensive line can continue to get better, continue to progress, that, that – it doesn't mean we're going to win, but it, it means that, that we should be in a pretty good uh, place come that fourth quarter. Absolutely. Good friend Matthew Gillespie, i got to give him some help. They have a program that you can get if you want to print out 70-something pages. But, Matthew, help me out with a couple of things. First of all, our playoff record is 22-21 and 21 for our history. We do have a state championship also in there. And uh, it's just kind of funny. The team, one of the teams in the other bracket happens to be Finship Christian, which Jackson Christian set a record against for interceptions in the besides winning the state title that year. Yep. Columbia Academy, a storied program. They've even had coaches write articles in Scholastic Coach and uh, Athletic Journal when they were separated. Um, those guys, I, it was still Columbia Military Academy at that time. And they come into it with a 17 and 18 playoff record. And um, they have made 19 appearances, just like we've made 23. So this isn't new stuff to them. That's it right. isn't new to us. Going to be two very fine football teams knocking heads, trying to execute and make things happen. And also, I, and I, I'll get this later, go ahead and, and let's carry that thought a little further, what the keys to victory are. Yeah, uh, we talked to Coach Phillips from a defensive perspective, and I think tackling, um, ensuring – and getting to the football, staying in our gaps, don't give those guys lanes to cut back in. Um, and then when they take shots down the field that, that our eyes aren't in the backfield, that our corners are, that have gotten better continue to do their job. And, um, you know, those, those are the things I see defensively. And, and offensively, we want to run the ball. Um, yes, we can throw it. Yes, we can spread it out. And, but at the end of the day, our, our goal is to get three, four yards of carry and see if we can pop one. Um, which we've been able to do. We've been fortunate to do that with some big plays, and they're going to make us work. It's not going to. It's not going to be easy, um, and and no game will be at this point. Uh, but you know, offensively, run the football, take care of the football, uh, win the turnover battle, and and we should have a, a a good shot to be in it. Now he was due to be a guest tonight. We're going to need another big game out of Gage Boykin, and I'll let you tell him he. He had – I don't know what his quarterback rating was. I had it on the other sheet that's sitting on my desk, and Susan's probably reading it right now, listening <laughs> to us and watching us. But he had a great night the other night. Yeah, very efficient. Um, read his – went through his progression, made some really good throws, trusted his uh, – trusted the pocket, and had a really good game. And since we're talking about people, there was another young man that hooked up with Gage on some of those – and uh, he had a super night, too. And he's had a couple of them here in the, what I call the second half of the season. And I'll let you tell who that young man is. Yeah, we had our, our Twitter poll up this week and, and had fair, had four very good um, candidates on there with Jalen, Cam, Gage, and Daniel Green. And uh, the last time I looked before the show, Daniel was at 35%. Uh, two catches, 40 yards, two touchdowns. And, and that's pretty efficient. Um, got him out on the wheel route outside the pocket there and then uh, used him in the red zone. And, and having him uh, be a target and be a weapon is huge um, when, you know, teams try to condense and they try to stop the run. They get focused on 23-3, number one, all those guys that we can get the ball to. Having a target like that has got to be a safety blanket for a quarterback. And he's we talked about him last week and how, how he's gotten better. But what I love is how he's been so unselfish in the blocking in the run game. 
and how his physicality has really helped us with that. Yeah, and he'll Congratulations hit you from the him. blocking back, or I call it an H back. Yep. Sometimes he lines up in backfield, he can be a tight end. He plays defense too, Pete. Yep. And he's getting better. But he reminds me of a linebacker that you said you were too young. Ted Hendricks, the mad stork, all you old timers that follow University of Miami football, the Green Bay Packers, and the Raiders, you know who the mad stork, who's a Hall of Famer, is. Now, we've got a we're all time two and one against Columbia Academy in a no contest. We've won the last two. Thoughts on that and tell people how they can get uh, tickets for this game. We're we're excited. Um, another opportunity to, to play at home. Uh, you can buy tickets on the GoFan app for eight dollars with a fee, or you can uh, ten dollars cash at the door. Uh, and Bus to Blay gets their um, you know their money from the game, and so that's why uh, there's no passes or anything like that. Uh, but we we're excited. We hope there's a, a great turnout. We we want there to be a huge crowd and, and be loud and and support these guys and. One thing from Friday night, I um, just want to give a shout-out to Coach McLean who puts this this stuff together for us. Gives, I believe he does a, a call sheet for you for the game, his class. And uh, Friday night we had to have him uh, signaling a little bit. We were down a, down a coach there in the first half, and, and Coach McLean filled in and does all our social media and, and just does a lot of stuff for the football program, and, and we're grateful for him and thankful for him for that. Absolutely. That spotting chart we had there, none better in America than the one that he and his class makes. I'm going to cheat on time just a hair and remind you there is a service fee, though, if you go through GoFan. Um, I think you wind up saving 40 cents or something like that. $10, and then with the service fee, that's going to run that $8 ticket on go fan up some people have already been surprised by that's the reason yeah, i brought it up that's right and we're going to have it we don't know exactly which form it'll probably be audio with a replay 24 hours later um, and i'm talking about with video the whole gumball and stuff national federation gets involved with that and i'm not going to lecture everybody about my feelings about the national federation i'm an old economics teacher so um we're the best deal in town, I guarantee. This show will be back. Remind you, this is a copyright broadcast. And I want to thank Gary Lockhart for the excellent job he always does. Paul Schultze, I couldn't do without my co-host, and we're going to do some basketball. Brian Bullard, Coach Darby Palmer, Coach Phillips, the two young men that were here were super tonight. And any rebroadcast, retransmission, or further use of this show without the expressed written consent of Worthy Road Studios is prohibited. It's time to say thanks for your time this time till next time. Good night, all. <laughs>